It's the first smart TV platform to carry it. It's going to cost 15 bucks a month, and it gives players access to a library of hundreds of video games that they can stream right to their TV. So for more on what this means for gaming and the competition, let's bring in Doug Clinton, Loop Ventures, for more on just what this does do to the video, escape land, video game landscape. And, and I wonder, Doug, is this a game changer? Is this one that kind of resets everybody in terms of that content versus hardware discussion? I think it does. I think that Microsoft, really more than any other company in gaming, is sort of changing the nature of the business by combining hardware in the cloud with, I think, great content that they're going to have with Bethesda, which was an acquisition a couple of years ago, and then Activision, which probably closes later this year or early next year. I think they've married the two worlds perfectly. And so I think they're really setting the bar as high as it can be. And competitors you know, like Sony or some of these other companies that have dabbled and maybe intimated that they're interested in getting into gaming, they have to decide if they're really serious and compete with Microsoft on this kind of content, really high-end content uh, paradigm. So, so let's put the kind of rubber to the road situation here, Doug. Does then Sony's PlayStation, do other console makers, have to now match what Microsoft is doing and how much in resources do they have to kind of put? How much of a first mover advantage does Microsoft have here with Samsung? I think Microsoft has probably two steps. I mean, the one thing with Sony that is interesting for them is obviously they have a TV business already. It's not as big as Samsung's business, but they can probably move fairly quickly and at least get a product on market. I think the bigger challenge for a company like Sony or, again, anybody else who might want to try to get into this streaming gaming space is really having enough breadth of content to compete. And that's really where I think Microsoft has probably strategically been thinking about this for years, if not maybe the better part of a decade. You know, if Sony wants to compete, if others want to compete, I think they have to think about going out into the market and maybe making acquisition of one of these uh, mid to smaller size publishers out there. So, what, so you, you bring up an interesting point here, because when it comes to video games, they are big business, but they're not the primary business for companies like Sony or Microsoft, for that matter. They're, they're, it's dwarfed by other parts of Microsoft right now. When you do look at content versus hardware, you mentioned the content side of things. How much more important will this be for the content publishers, people like Electronic Arts or Activision Blizzard or other video game publishers? Is that the play here or is it Microsoft or Sony? I think it could be both. I mean, in terms of how we're positioning, if we look at our portfolio, gaming is the biggest position in our portfolio right now. We feel very comfortable owning gaming stocks, whether we go into recession or not. They've sort of proven to be a little bit countercyclical. They don't get hit as hard as other sort of digital consumer names, uh, things in e-commerce or things in advertising. And so the answer is, I think, some of both. The thing that's so unique, I think, and important about content is that there's just so few truly great content titles out there. And we really like to invest in companies that build true worlds. Take Two is one of the bigger positions in our portfolio. Obviously, their crown jewel is Grand Theft Auto. They're still working off of an eight-year-old game now with Grand Theft Auto, and it's still one of the top revenue-generating games in the world. So if you think about the power of content, I think that tells a lot of the story. It's a world that's been around. It's arguably stale because it's almost a decade old, and people still go and play it because they've done such a great job updating the world with new experiences for players. More than a decade old. I, I remember GTA back when I was in my early to mid-20s as well. Doug Clinton, thank you very much. We appreciate it.